Hi, this is Bill Campbell. We're up here at the Upper Valley or Deer Valley Camp Meeting at by Newport, Washington. And we're fortunate to have today with us today Rich Thompson, who's going to go over the discussion of how he came about reworking the 1843 and 50 charts for our viewers and for people out there to give studies on our history of our church. It's been a difficult journey for him, but he's found many interesting avenues where he could reset these charts up properly for us to understand. So it's clarification, simple pixel design for us to understand. And Rich is going to share the story of the research he had to go through, what in, was involved in this work, what mistakes he found, what clarifications he had to make. So Rich, tell me a little bit about these charts. Well, it all started when I just, I just wanted to print some for distribution. I wanted, I'm always about trying to get DVDs or videos out. And so um, now the charts came along and definitely wanted to get them out. And uh, so I went to my local printer and I took the best file that I had of the 50 and the 43, and I ordered $1,000 worth of charts. $1,000 worth of charts. Now, yeah. that's dedication. Rich, tell us some more. What happened? Well, um, when I got them back from the printer, they were unreadable. So they, what did they do? Just say, oh, that's the way it goes? No, I called them up, and I told them the situation, and they gave me a full refund. So what did you find is the difficulty you had to have? What was the problem with the charts? Well, it's just... Um, you know, when you're looking at pictures on the internet, you're looking at them in, on a small screen. When you want to blow those pictures up to a poster size, uh, if they don't have a high enough pixelation, um, they are going to just get distorted. Okay, so what was the process that you had to go through to restate these charts, to blow them up where people could see them, clar clarifying things, seeing the words correctly, understanding these things? That's the story we want to hear from you. Right, well... I uh, um, had to go on a search now because I'm stumped. I, I got a mission I want to do and I don't have the tools. So I put it together a slide present presentation and I will show you uh, a little bit about that step. Okay, this is important because Rich will show us how he went about the process of reestablishing these charts but finding certain things in that that weren't there before. And it's been a controversial issue for a lot of folks because of the different charts that are out there at this point. So Rich will clarify for us how he went about it, the discoveries he made, and also the final product. Rich, thank you. Yep. Okay, well, there's a quote from Ellen White that says that the prophecy charts were led by God, by the hand of God, and that there was a few mistakes in them. But we're not going to discuss that, that right now. But... What I would like to say is it, it did also say that the chart should not be changed without inspiration. Amen. And as we go through this today, you're going to see that there has been some changes, and I can assure you it wasn't by inspiration. And, and there's a lot of confusion. And people sometimes, when I'm restoring the charts, think that I'm changing the chart instead of restoring it back to its original. So just to give some clarification and to um, help people maybe understand some of the issues or some of the confusion out there, um, that's what this, is, this video is for. So as we start, um, the first picture you're going to see here is my final finished version. Um, most, I, nobody has seen this up until this date in this form because uh, one of the items on this chart I didn't have. I just recently got a hold of a file and was, that had the stone on an original chart, and um, so this stone has now been placed on here. I had to substitute because it's the only thing I didn't have the artwork for. But one of the things we're going to discuss is this goat head, this stone, his, his uh, grease and the thighs and belly of brass, uh, this horn right here, and uh, just and overall, um, what happened here and how I came to get in this chart the way it is now. Uh, next one. This is one of the files that I was able to find. You can see it's very dirty, stained, and um, you can't even make out the face or anything on the body of the, of the image. Um, but you will notice that there is a goat here, and you can't see it very well, but there's three lines of text here that go with that goat. But, of course, there's no stone. So, and I'll also notice these crease lines. 
These crease lines are in every one of the originals. And the reason why, and I call this an original because they doctored them after they were printed. They didn't, they didn't, these were all printed at one time and they had to put these together in four parts because at that time they didn't have the technology to make a giant poster. So you'll see the, one of the fingerprints of recognizing an original chart is seeing these crease lines or things that don't add up or don't line up. Go ahead, next slide. Here, very clearly, you can see a little jolt or a little uh, a, a jagged edge there and here where the two, where those different sections didn't quite line up perfectly. Classic um, representation that this was an original chart. Now, this chart, you can clearly see there are some differences on this chart from the first one we saw. There's nothing in this square here. There's no text lines. There's no goat. There's no stone. The pants have been hiked up uh, to here, and we'll discuss that. And um, this, there's a horn here. I didn't point it out in the uh, last one, but there's no horn in that last one. So we'll go to the next one. Here you see there's no horn here. There are three lines of text here. There's no goat here. There's no stone here. But the pants go all the way down to the knees. And we know when we read Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, that the belly and thighs were of brass. Now, I've had people argue with me that maybe, maybe the thigh is, means something else. And I know that we didn't create language, and Adam knew how to speak from the day that he was created. And um, a thigh has always meant a thigh. So um, you hear some silly arguments from people sometimes, and this is just to clear up some of those and some serious arguments. So uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Here's a chart that was, that was print, a picture of somebody holding up a chart. Uh, well, who's this guy, you thought? Um, someone says, our cameraman Bill Campbell says that he thinks that uh, that's Jim Nix, and very well may be. Uh, from Andrews University, and notice that there's a goat. You can barely see the lines, but there's three lines of text there. There is a stone, the full pants, and so this was the only chart that I was able to find that had a stone on it, and I didn't think there was a stone until I saw this, and it made a whole lot more sense to have it there than to not have it there, and knowing that they had already doctored so much on the other charts, I wasn't surprised. So it made sense that, okay, they've been messing with these charts. So what I need to do is I really need to just look through this and examine it. Next slide. So this is the chart that I had blown up and spent $1,000 on. Um, it has the best representation of the images on it. The artwork is very good. It's still very dark and dismal, and you cannot see much detail. But one of the things that's nice about um, learning how to use uh, Photoshop and other things like that is you can do miracles with these things. Without, without destroying the integrity of the print, you can bring out things that are in pictures you didn't even know were in them. For example, this right now is kind of gray and brown and um, dark colored image. But when I put brightness and contrast on this, this head just popped out a beautiful yellow, and this was a nice deep gray. I had to do a little uh, cosmetic work on the legs, but other than that, um, I didn't touch those images, and as you'll see again when we go back to the finished product, they came out really, really nice. But you'll notice that this one it has the three lines of text, and there's no goat, and there's no stone. Um, so from there, I'm going to leave this one up, this is the one that we've been used to seeing that has been used by uh, a lot of the prophecy seminars you've seen. And most of you are probably more familiar with this one than any other. And yet this is probably the most doctored and mutilated version that we have ever seen. And notice that this, like I said before, this, this, this horn is not even supposed to be there. Um, but there's other things taken away. So looking over here at this chart, this is, this is the... Uh, one, if you've seen my charts, then restored, you may be familiar with this stone that I put here. 
At this point in time, I did not have the new uh, stone that actually was on the original, so I had to take one from a Revelation seminar and place it on there for a substitute until we could find a better file. So on this chart, you'll notice that on this side, there's a timeline. It starts at 700 BC, 600 BC, 500, 400, 300. It goes down to the cross, and then starts counting upward till 1800 and then 1843. So this is showing that this chart itself is a timeline. Okay, if you'll notice that this timeline has where the cross lands at the time of Christ, the image standing next to it, Daniel 2, it is right in the middle of Greece. And we all know that it was the Romans who crucified Christ. So somebody in history thought that it was a wise thing to do to clarify and to correct the chart. So they said, let's just hike the pants up here and make Rome coincide with this. And if you, and if you have any question about it, if you look, it's exactly above right where the cross is at. Clearly, I mean, you can argue that that isn't the reason why, but I'd like to give me a better explanation. So what they did is they hiked up the, short, they hiked up the pants to, to, to make this timeline not be incorrect. So there's a problem here. This is a timeline. This is a picture, this is a picture image graph. Um, I am sure that Babylon wasn't exactly starting here and ending here. Nor Medo-Persia starting here and ending here. And if we actually did this proportional, the feet have to come down past 1843. So we'd have to take his legs and just pull them all the way down to the bottom of the thing. This is a picture of Daniel 2. It was perfect the way God gave it to Josiah Litch to make this chart. And he should have, they should have left it alone. Now also we have, so you notice what they did? They took a time problem and they adjusted the chart. Well, that's not the only time problem with this image. This stone, which whether you want to say it's the 144,000 or Christ's second coming, whatever your interpretation is, it comes at the end. Well, the end is down here at the bottom of the chart. Or continuing on, if that's not the end of the world. So this stone is not, didn't, and this stone did not come before Papal Roman or the other image. So that's a problem too, so let's remove that. So they took that off. So now we've moved two items to fix the time problems. But here's something they didn't pay attention to or they didn't fix. Notice it says Babylon here. It says Babylon here, representing this strip right here is Babylon. All the images in this area are Babylon. Medo-Persia, right across from this arm and chest is two images, a bear and a ramp. Both of these images represent Medo-Persia and they are joined together by naming them once in between the two of them. Greece down here has got more representation, there's more detail in the story. And we have two images that represent Greece and two other images that represent Greece, all in the time frame of Greece. And notice that the, the Grecia is joining these two images together, showing that Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 are talking about the same thing. Daniel 7 here, well actually this one here, this verse here comes from chapter 8, but this is just showing that this is a blow up of this beast here that has four horns, and there's the four horns, and this verse says, out of one of, the, out of, one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the pleasant land. There's a little horn here that is, has Rome, coming out of the Macedonian horn, and this is what they had represented here. But notice they took it out. Sometimes they took out the goat only so, and left the, left the text. Sometimes they took out the whole thing. But either way, the original had it here. So, um, Sorry, we just had a distraction. It threw me off for a second. Okay, the one thing that shouldn't be on this chart, there's one thing that shouldn't be on this chart. It's this horn right here. But because it is scripturally correct, the little horn did wax great, 
and it does represent pagan and papal Rome. I left it there because everybody's familiar with it and it's been on here. So I left that there, but if I was really going to be critical to being absolutely perfect to the original, I would have removed it. But um, people are familiar with it and it's been there and nobody has a problem with it, so I left it alone. And so people, so notice this chart now has the pants the way they're supposed to be. It has the goat where it's supposed to be. It has the stone where it's supposed to be. Even though it's not the correct stone, it still has it where it's supposed to be. And I still get, um, I still get a lot of hassle from people who don't understand what's going on. And they think that I'm altering the charts. But I'm actually restoring them. What, we, what we're doing is we're running around with the NIV. And I've got a King James over here. And so we need to recognize that, um, that the original chart is perfect the way it is. It doesn't need correction. You don't need to fix this grease with this. We know that Christ wasn't born or crucified in the time of Greece. This chart isn't saying that he was. It's only man's ignorance trying to fix something that God had ordained. This prophetic chart, which is a miracle. This is a miracle chart. And man thought he could improve on it. Now, I just want to show you a few things that are uh, very interesting. Also, you notice that here where we have pagan Rome, you have pagan Rome here, and you have pagan Rome here. This is pagan Rome in Daniel. This is the book of Daniel. This side of the chart is actually Revelation. So where Daniel matches up with Daniel, it's represented here. But where Daniel rep rep matches up with the book of Revelation, you have the two symbols together. It's represented as a dragon with seven heads and ten horns, a great red fiery dragon. It drew a third of the stars from heaven. And in Daniel, it's a great um, beast with iron teeth and um, other characteristics. So when we get down to 538, the beginning of the 1260, it's after this date that we see Papal Rome. It's not above or below. This is a timeline in itself. This timeline does not add up exactly with this timeline. This one is spaced evenly and proportionately. This one is spaced according to the fact that they needed room to put in the text and to tell you, explain to you. So 538 right here comes across to the year 1000. It's, don't try to fix it. It's perfect the way it is. So, um, see if there's uh, anything more I want to say about this. One thing I do want to say is this chart here has um, this, this horse here and this horse here representing Islam. There's three angels here. This is the first, second, and third woes representing Islam. The reason why there's not a third horse here is because at this time, the third woe had not arrived. And you'd be good to study, and study the, the prophecies of these charts and find out about Islam because we know Islam is in the world today and God did have something to say about it. So, one of the reasons why I'm making this film is because where I'm at now at a prophecy school, camp meeting, uh, this is the chart that was on the wall. This is obviously the chart that I, that I had previously done, but notice because they wanted to not be heretics or be stoned by the brethren, they thought, well, you know what? This one doesn't have a goat, so I'm going to remove the goat, and I'm going to remove the stone. But they left the text there, that goes with the goat. So, you know, people, they, um, if you're going to do something, first study it out. Don't go by prejudice. I find a lot of the arguments that I get are because of prejudice or they think that somebody's got more um, influence than somebody else so they should be listened to. But, um, you know, the Lord led me to, to uh, go through this whole process. I it took me a year to create this chart. Um, I started out with uh, Microsoft Digital Image Work. It was working with JPEG images. And all I was doing was doctoring these images, trying to clean them up. And every time you save the image, it, it loses quality. 
And so by the time I'd gotten a whole lot of good work done, it had really diminished in quality. So then I learned about Photoshop. Didn't know anything about it. Took me months to learn it. And I can't tell you how many times I spent like 14 hours putting into this, putting work into these, and my computer crashed. Hmm. It's not fun work. It wasn't, it wasn't, believe me, this is very tedious and hard work. Yet I pulled, I ran through it and went through it and went through it. It took me a year, and now we have these charts. What's nice about these charts now is all of the lines of text are a separate line of information in the file, the original file, the Photoshop file. So I have had a template made with all the wording where all the wording is on one side of a Word document and the other side is blank. And if you want to translate this into any language, you just translate exactly what's written in the English over in the box for the other language. And we have, up till now, we have got the Romanian, we, or we have a chart in Romanian of the 43 and the 50 chart. We have Hungarian in the 43 and 50. We have a German 43. We have a Dutch 1850. We have um, the Spanish uh, in both, in both uh, the 43 and the 50. And if you want one in French or any other language, um, please contact me and, and uh, we'll put it in your, in your language with the original artwork in the original form. So you can have a chart too that is just like the ones that Miller had. Now, uh, I don't have the 50 chart uh, with me. Oh, it's, there's one over there. I think that's good enough for this presentation for now, but uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at sabbathkeeper99 at hotmail.com. And if you'd like to request a chart, um, this here is an image of the, uh, well, I'll explain this. One of the problems I had in putting these images on was I traced them out. And so I cut them out and I put them on the new canvas. Well, one of the things that was really hard to trace because there's not a fine, definite edge is this cloud that's mingled in with the stars around the, around the tail of the dragon. And so it wasn't something you could really cut out and there was still a lot of muck and stains and stuff all around. So what I ended up doing was I made a choice. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not a good enough artist and I don't want to start drawing on the charts. So I actually took a photograph of a cloud off of the internet and placed a real cloud, a photograph of a cloud behind the tail. And so it's cleaned and it's nice and we don't have a bunch of bad artwork all over there. And since it's supposed to be representing a cloud, I felt that that was a fair um, exchange. But uh, yeah, it's taken a lot, of, a lot of, if you'll notice, the face on this, his face came out nice and clear. It's, it's a nice, beautiful yellow for the gold. And, uh, and it, it, yeah, so anyways, the new, the new image, do I have the final one on there? Oh, let me say this. The goat, when I didn't, see, I didn't have a goat. I had those other goats that were on um, some of those pictures you saw, but they would come out 10 times worse than this, and this, looks, this is actually better than it looks. But I took this image right here off of a video that's on the internet with Merlin Burt um, discussing at Andrews University with a gentleman that has a shirt on that says, what don't you know, and has the chart on. And they're sitting there discussing this chart on the table, and at one point, the uh, person of the camera scanned over and went right over this goat. And so I stopped the frame right there, I, and then I cut it out, and I placed it on the chart. So now it, this, this goat is an original, off an original chart, but I had to take a, while, a different way of getting it on there. But um, everything that you see on here is, is verifiable. And I just remembered, um, here's, here's what just came out. We have some more. Somebody went to Loma Linda and took a picture of the best original chart we have. They took this picture. There was lighting there that caused a problem with trying to get a clear picture of it. They didn't, so it's not the greatest picture, 
but it was done with a good camera. And they, they didn't only take a one big picture, they also focused in on a couple of the controversial uh, places. Go ahead, next. And here, I haven't traced this out. This is a better looking uh, goat than the one I have. I may exchange it later. But the pixelation on this is, is it's a low quality. Because the, the, I know that the image I got isn't the one from the camera. This image that I have is a 72 megapixels, or 72 kilo. Is anyways, it's 72 DPI or whatever it is. And I know that cameras don't take pictures that low. So if I can get a hold of the gentleman who took this picture, I can get a picture that I can cut out and give you the beautifulest goat you've ever seen on this. But right now, we have the one we have. Next. But this, this stone was great. It was a perfect, uh, it was just fine. I just, there's a little bit of haze here from this light. I was able to just darken this just a little bit and cut this stone out and put it on the new chart. And so now we have an original stone uh, on the chart where it belongs. And I believe the next picture is the final version. So now you see I lightened it up a little bit because it was very dark and old. And you know, when you look at the old pictures, you think, well, you know, these are old charts. They, that doesn't look weathered, it doesn't look old. Why, I'll tell you what, the reason why the charts look old is because they are old. But they used to be new. And the charts that William Miller went out with didn't look like the ones we have today. They didn't look all stained and dark and, and deteriorated. They looked very nice from the printer. They were brand new and they went out. And this is the chart that went to evangelize the world. And so I've gotten it to where you can read it and clean up the images. And so everything on here belongs on here except for this horn here, but it is scripturally correct and it fits in there and it's attractive and so I believe that we'll, we'll let her stay there. But uh, other than that, um, you know, please don't try to help the chart because God made it perfect the first time he did it. And uh, so that's what we have today and, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>